As always, it is, is such a real treat to be here with you all this morning. I'm, I'm grateful to your, your priest, Father Jeff, uh, and, and it's, it's wonderful to, uh, to be with you. And, and as I think about uh, this, our readings today, which are so very rich, and, and our collect, which we read about uh, keeping our mind on uh, heavenly things, not earthly things, things that pass away. This gospel that is, reveals such, uh, such an aspect of human nature uh, where, where our Lord is saying, essentially, let me be me. If I want to give, I can give. It's the same thing that God is saying to Jonah, isn't it? Let God be God. God is bigger than anything we can ever ask for or imagine. His mercy is limitless. And that, I think, is part of the, the offense of the gospel. We sometimes hear, you sometimes hear said that, that the gospel offends even today. And I think it's, it's this sort of thing that offends uh, because I, I certainly can 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 relate, um, and I, I, I as I think about myself in this category, I, I can think of lots of instances when when I'm the grumbling one, uh, and uh, that's that's again that's that's human nature. But the the call the call of God is is the call to mercy. That wonderful book by Pope Francis, the name of God is mercy. The name of God is mercy. And this is such a rich time of the year, of course. Uh, In part, perhaps because the Clemson Tigers are back at it again. Finally, uh, I was out at the luncheon for Calvary, so Calvary Episcopal Church that celebrated their 170th yesterday, and so I I caught the the last quarter of the game. And so... uh, so it, this is a rich time of year for lots of reasons, but particularly for we who follow the liturgical calendar. We who follow the liturgical calendar, this past Thursday was the Feast of St. Matthew. And of course, Matthew, Levi, the tax collector, our Lord reached out to him, said, come, come. He invited him to follow him. And it was... It was Matthew, who recognized within himself his own need for mercy. Again, mercy. How can we show mercy to others if we do not know that we need it ourselves? And then, of course, this coming Friday on the church calendar is the, the Feast of, of St. Michael and All Angels, uh, and you, we, we used to call it Michaelmas. Uh, and of course, in, in, uh, in England, at, at, at Oxford and in, in Cambridge, the, the fall term, the autumn term, is still called Michaelmas term. Uh, and, and it comes from Michael's Mass. Michael's Mass, an ancient, an ancient festival where, where we celebrate, we celebrate the presence of angels in our midst. Think about this, this prayer, that you, you know it from evening prayer, and I want to read it to you. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give thine angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for thy love's sake. Found, of course, and that was the traditional version and, and the right one of, of evening, evening prayer. And so what are angels? I went to Suwannee for my theological education, and, the, and Suwannee is, uh, is, is very orthodox in the, in, the, in, the, in the traditional sense of the term. And so they, they did a good job of drilling it into us that, that angels are a separate order from humans. And, and so I, I get that. 
I know that. Um, that, that St. Michael and Raphael and Gabriel, I understand the order is a different order from humans. And so that when we die, we don't become angels. We, all right, so, so the Sawani so did, the, they also did a good job of um, instilling in me the, uh, the, the rubrics of the, of the 1979 prayer book. Uh, and so uh, those, are, those are very important things, um, and, I'm, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, but angels, what are they? They're simply messengers of God. Messengers of God. If we allow for God to be God, then that means that you, no doubt, have been an angel to someone at some point, I dare say more than once in your life. If we allow for the expansive nature of God, then you know that there's been someone in your life who has served as an angel to you. Think about those many times. Sometimes I know for myself, we become so caught up in the day-to-day, don't we? We become so caught up in what's to do next. That we go straight through life. I know I do, without seeing sometimes. Some mornings I wake up and my prayer is, Lord, help me to see today what you want me to see. I think that's just another way of saying, Lord, if there are angels in my midst who are trying to say something to me and bring a word from you, help me to see and hear them and receive that word. I've said this a number of times, and I believe it, that you won't find this in the Bible, but I believe very firmly that when we cross over to the other side and we look back on our earthly lives and the things that mattered, I often think they won't be the great works that, that, that you may have done. I think they'll be oftentimes our, our chance encounters with people walking down a street, walking down a, a hospital corridor, walking past someone in a grocery store, holding a door. It's going to be those encounters that, that, that we have, we have every single day over and over again. And we're going to realize that, that those are eternal Experiences, experiences with eternal consequences. And so a- angels help us to see. As I look out at this congregation, many of you whom I've gotten to know well over the last few years, I, I see angels among this group, for sure. Messengers of God. As, as a child growing up, the angel Gabriel felt very familiar to me because if you're, you remember the, the service, the Feast of Lights that, 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 that was often held in, in churches, it was, the, it was the Epiphany service, but it was, it was sometimes called the, the Feast of Lights. And, and my grandmother had, had made the, the, the angel wings for Gabriel. And Gabriel always stood in the pulpit with a light shining. And, and so, as a child, I, I, we knew, we grandchildren knew the closet. The, the wings were up high on the shelf. And so, I can just remember, we would, when we wanted to see Gabriel, we wanted to see the angel, we would open that door to that closet and peek up. And we knew not to touch anything, because we knew everything would come tumbling down. Raphael, of course, is God has healed. Michael, who is like God. Angels are simply fellow servants of God with humanity. They are messengers. They are messengers. When 
when do you, when do we encounter such messengers? Archbishop of Canterbury, William Temple, said one time that, that, that we, we maybe have not had visions or trances or, or things like that, Myst what we would call mystical experiences, or maybe we have. But William Temple says, we do know that there have been times in our life when we have said our prayers and we know that they have been heard. There have been times, he says, when we have asked for guidance and we have received it. Why? Because God is a great God, a merciful God, a God who, who approaches the sinner. Because our Lord knows that, the, that those who are sinful and those who know their sin are open to the Spirit. And that would include each one of us. And that just simply means that if we know mercy ourselves, if we have been shown mercy when we did not deserve it, and that's a good question, Perhaps, perhaps you haven't been shown mercy. But God grants you mercy. When we know mercy ourselves, we can then extend it to others. And that's part of, that's part of what this wonderful college for today is talking all about when it says... Grant us, Lord, not to mind earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to cleave to those that shall abide. All of this is the stuff of eternity. Yes, we have our lives to live. Yes, you have your work to do, and I have mine. And we have our work together to do. Thank God for it. At the... Uh, at the, um, the luncheon for, for Calvary Church uh, yesterday, they, they had, there was a, a, a video of the, the elders of the church. They have a number of people in that congregation who are in their 80s and 90s, and, and, and they were seeking words of wisdom. How is it that you can be 90-something and still be reading the lessons on Sunday morning serving at the altar. And, and one, of the, one, of the, one of the gentlemen who was interviewed, his answer was, stay, get, get, can you guess it? Stay busy. Stay busy. So we keep doing the things that we're called to do, all the mundane things. But in the midst of that, as, as Tuma Porter once said, the spiritual world and the material world are much closer together than we can ever imagine. So realize that, that you are quite often entertaining angels unawares. That you are too serving as an angel to another. Once when I was a young adult and I was traveling, it must have been in an airport, and this gentleman approached me out of the blue, an older gentleman. And he just handed me a, a slip of paper on a napkin. And on that napkin was written, Jesus said, I am with you always. I'm with you always. And then he was gone. So don't be afraid to recognize the angels among you as you consider things heavenly. And don't be afraid to be one yourself. Amen.